Hi y'all, it's Carolina, and I want to do a tutorial about balances. When I say balance, I mean balancing in stillness on a place on the body. So, there are many places that you can balance on your body. You can balance in the palm of your hand lengthwise, sideways, back of the hand lengthwise, back of the hand sideways, and they're all, and you can use small bits, so instead of just the back of the hand, the whole forearm, or you can use smaller bits where you start to take things off. So balances are about feeling the weight of a thing in your hand, which is one of the reasons I'm using this hoop, I'm trying to train in another hoop, but I can feel the heaviness of it sitting in my hand. And then I can adjust underneath its weight. So the trick to balancing is that if you're not balancing on one point, you're balancing on multiple points. So if you're not balancing like on the edge of your fingertip or your thumb, you're probably balancing between your thumb and under your pinky finger, two places. So if you can find those two places and place them, you can put a hoop anywhere you want to and hold it. Um, so balancing is about how you come up under the thing that you're trying to balance. For example, if I'm trying to balance this hoop and I'm trying to balance it on a flat space that I'm creating by my hand, my hand has to be completely square and flat, like I'm carrying a tray of drinks. If my fingertips are up at all, the hoop is going to roll towards me. So. Which is awesome for starting rolls from there. So. Just remember, when you're ready to start a roll, you lift your fingertips so that it rolls towards you. But when people start learning balances, often the hoop rolls away from them. And that always means that the fingertips are lower than the heel of the hand. So another thing that often happens is that if, you, if you're making your hand flat, and then you can create a little dent in it by lowering the middle finger just a little bit, so that you, now you've got a dent between the pointer and the ring finger. Then if you can squish your hand up so that you create this, like if you were gonna hold water to splash on something, you didn't wanna drop to drip out, it would be very squishing from the sides. So that's what you sit your hoop into as well. That exact same thing that you're pushing up from the heel equally to the pointer finger, tip of the pointer finger. So. What's most likely to go wrong here, after not squishing it enough that you feel these two pads come together, is letting the pinky side of the hand drop without realizing it. Because we have a tendency to rotate like this as humans. So think about pushing up through the pad under the pinky and towards the back. That brings you up in front of the hoop and lifts up the front of the hand so that the hoop doesn't want to fall forward. So another place to put your attention on the hoop is not where it's actually in the hand. Now that we've figured out how to hold the hand, um, the attention that you want to put on it is in the opposite top side of the hoop. Like if it was a Christmas ornament and you were trying to hang it on a tree that was just a little taller than you could reach. How you just balance it for a second to lift it up. That's your looking up here instead of down here and that's what we have to control is the opposite side not the side that's in the palm of our hand so once you start to get here and you start to coach yourself by observing where your falls are happening making corrections in those areas then you start to think if this was the first way that you learned it how could you make that bigger and one way you can make that bigger is to let the hoop roll towards you. So you just hug it 
and you're right exactly in the middle. When you're in the middle, you can come up to either side, balance it in that hand, and take the top hand off. The top hand is there to correct if you need correcting. And while it's cool to hold your hoop a long place, a long time in one place, don't judge your success by how long you can stay in a place. Judge it by how many times you can correct and not lose the hoop. It's those being able to make corrections, even though they're so small that other people can't see them, really. That's what allows you to be able to do all kinds of other things, so to have mastery of balances. So, I talked about this one here. If I put my hand in here, and then I slide my whole arm forward so it's against my forearm, I can balance it here. Now the first balance that we learned was down the middle finger, but honestly there's three ways that are fun on the inside of the arm. Down the middle finger, down the pointer finger, or down the two of them together like they're one thing. And you can lift up and balance from any of those places, and in fact the one with the two fingers might be easiest because it gives you the biggest landing pad <laughs> for the hoop. So, let's see, I had thought of one other thing I wanted to share with you. Attention up there, balance in the heel, lift from the heel, close. When you're ready to come off and lower the uh, small end, the balancing point, do it one bit at a time. So, if it's up here, my head is against it, first thing I'm gonna take off is my head and I'm gonna do whatever I need to do with my upper arm and my tip of my pointer finger to readjust. Then I'm gonna take off the upper arm. So right now I'm using my fingers to help me readjust. Take off the forearm, push up through the heel. And when you're ready to keep going up, see if you can push straight up. Now the trick to pushing up under your hoop is that you can't do it fast because you don't want the hoop to catch air. You are trying to basically kind of impale yourself upon the hoop, keep contact with it the whole way up. So when it comes to doing balances, it doesn't matter what size hoop you use. I like a heavy hoop because I can feel it in my hand. I find it easier to balance them. But I also like a light hoop because when I'm first learning to balance, they're kind of heavy and tiring. So uh, hoop doesn't really matter. Uh, but I would recommend trying a heavy hoop just to feel the weight of it oof, as it sits in your hand and it balances there. So as you learn balances, you can also use your other hand to adjust, to take a second, set it, balance it, take that first hand off. So. A place to come to that's in the middle is if you lay it against your forearm and you close it so that you've got it in a cradle between both of those arms. You open it. It should be in the sweet spot. Take your hands off and you've got your balance. All right, so there's lots of other balances. There's balances on the back of the arms. Um, and once you can make the full arc of a balance, so if I can go to the full length of moving it from my upper arm to my lower arm to my palm to my fingertips, and then have it come down the other side on the back of my fingertips. I've just moved between the back of my hand and the front of my hand. All right, I'm soft about balance. I'm all over the place right now. This will be one of the last videos I make from here. Um, I have to move. I have to find another place to live. So.